Hi Sagittarius, welcome to your end of April 2020 general tarot update. It's Raina here. Well, how has April been for you, Sag? Whew, you know, being a Sagittarian myself, it has been something else all over again. Let's put it that way. I think you know what I mean because we love freedom. And uh, it's very interesting to kind of reflect on some of these issues at this time. And uh, I know that a lot of people in past generations suffered quite a bit with various things imposed upon them, so I try to keep everything in perspective. Um, so I hope that everyone is doing well. And um, we'll just see what is going on with these cards. All right. Yay. I'm glad because uh, I'll, I'll explain in a minute why this card is special to me because it really, um, it really means a lot. And I am um, interpreting it looking through my own eyes. And I hope that um, this can be something that is universal. Because maybe you're dealing with the same thing. Okay, here we go. I just got that same card in the same position for another sign. But it's perfect. Because um, it might even connect to Taurus. This time of year, we're going to have a new moon in Taurus. By the way... Um, the new moon in Taurus falls into the sixth house of um, Sagittarius. Now, this is if you're if you're a sun in Sagittarius, this is the solar chart. But if you know what your rising sign is, you might say that's not in my sixth house. No, but this is for the solar chart. If your sun is in Sag and you have a rising sign, that's different. Um, but in any case, um, that could be new beginnings with your daily routine, your work, your work habits, your work itself, your diet, and all that kind of good stuff. Um, the the heart of the matter is the star card, faith in unseen forces, and I just had this conversation this morning in a certain kind of way because. Um, there's a lot of uncertainty right now, and sometimes we put our faith into something that we're told, like in the media, oh, this is going to happen, and it doesn't, and then we feel that sense of, um, in, in the first place, feeling more confused than ever, and also feeling like cynical. It can, it can come up that way if you feel like you're being jerked around that, in, in that sense. But... The thing about the star card that I was kind of like happy is because happy about is because it can be a card of healing. And I remember getting this card because I used to read for myself long before I ever thought of reading for, you know, lots of people. And I remember this one time I drew this card and I felt like the resistance that I had been holding just like melt away because I was looking up the, the, the meaning of that card, and one of the things they said was healing. And when you're healing, it means, I realized I kind of made that connection, it means that you've been dealing with an ordeal. You've been dealing with something that has taken its toll on you. And now you're in this process of recovering from it. And Part of what I see with the star card is inspiration. Is feeling that there is something that is guiding you, that is inspiring you. This can even be a crossover loved one who is trying to help you from the great beyond. And you have to be able to tune into that. And when we're fear-based or just, you know, very, very caught up in, um, whatever is happening in the material world at this moment in our journey, 
and we're not thinking about the fact that we are spiritual beings having a human experience, it can be very hard to, um, to, 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 to think like that, to think that there's something more, to think that there's something that could possibly be okay about whatever's going on. And when you realize that all is well, and it's going and you know and it's getting better all the time it's beautiful this is also a card that associates with um aquarius so you know if there's somebody in your life it doesn't have to be a romantic partner but somebody in your life that's an aquarius and they're figuring into your life very um significantly in the past position we have the ace of wands and this is a card of a new beginning, a new, you know, I always associate this with Aries. It could very well be, not sure. But um, that sense of forward momentum. And um, definitely because of the the fact that uh, Aries and Sagittarius are fire signs, you know, they're both compatible and they are um, going to work well together but now we're getting into this new that that was the past and there may have been something that you initiated or that you are thinking about or were thinking about initiating and now um or maybe took those baby steps to do it and now you realize that it has um potential and maybe this has been a long-held dream too that's what i was thinking because now that i think about it you know Aquarius um, rules the 11th house of hopes and wishes. And sometimes these dreams are deferred, aren't they? And what does it say in Raising the Sun? I've got to read that play. I've never seen the movie and I've never uh, read the play or seen the play. But a dream deferred dries in the sun, like a raisin in the sun or something like that. Um, we have as the, the higher message... The, um, the moon card, which connects to the creative and the intuitive. And this is, it's funny because I can't remember, I just, I've been doing a few readings in a row and I can't remember which sign it was, but I got that card. However, I got it in the past position, but still, that influence of the creative um or the intuitive that how does that play into something that you've always wanted to do so whether it's be an astrologer be be a an artist you know like a like a painter or writer um these things don't just kind of go away and maybe that is the key to you know for you to pursue your dream that connects to one of maybe one of these areas um, or simply because this is the spiritual position so it's like looking at a spiritual solution to this issue a meditation some we're getting in touch with it so that you can um, nurture your dream um, so that you don't that you don't have these moods you know this happens a lot too where people they you know, the Ace of Wands, yeah, I'm raring to go, I want to do this. And then they kind of fizzle out because something else comes along that kind of um, discourages them. And really one of the main reasons for meditation is for um, what we call the equanimity, which is like, you know, no matter what is happening in the outside world, the ability to kind of maintain that inner calm and and to me not even just that you know because you know sometimes it can feel like uh, not going crazy is being calm no that's not very effective because you're just kind of like holding on and I understand that feeling completely where you're maintaining they call it um, and you're able to function but you're that's it you're just kind of there I'm talking about like thriving. The people that you 
see in life who we would call self-actualized. And I am always in awe of these people because they, it, of course, they are successful in the world, but one of the things that they have is this, I don't know, it must be like a real, like a laser sharp focus where they're able to um, persevere no matter what. Like even if they have a lot of obstacles, they never lose sight of their goal. And also they have this very strong, it must be intuition because sometimes they do things and you're like, wow, they're really taking a risk. But they must know that it's going to um, turn out all right. Because w some of us, I consider myself kind of cautious. And I don't just jump into things usually. And so the intuition, the more you strengthen it, I imagine, even the average person, you can be able to, you know, make choices and not like, um, second guess yourself all the time not think that oh my god am I doing something that's going to you know lead to just complete disaster <clears throat> so it's very interesting how that works and what crosses you is this ten of swords and really this can just be as simple as a memory of something that is um, a betrayal or some kind of situation where you found that that someone that you had put faith in let you down and maybe it was like a big time situation it wasn't just something minor where you're double crossed by a co-worker um, that's something that you know it might hurt but it's not that big of a deal but something that really felt um, upsetting and Definitely with uh, Sag, there's always that that sense of idealism and that sense of um, everybody is going to play by the rules and be um, on the up and up. And uh, that uh, sense that you are being uh, treated the way that you treat them, you know? And sometimes... That's not what happens. Sometimes um, you can be really good to someone and they can treat you like, um, you know, you don't even matter. So the ability to um, kind of heal from that and, and that might still be in your vibration, something that uh, you are healing from but it still is there. Um, one of the nice things about this card is that it talks, well, in the upright, no, is it the upright position? Um, I, I don't know. I, I'll have to check, but I mean, in general, it can mean that the worst is over. But we're looking, so in other words, 10 is the end of a cycle. So um, the thing that I feel with this particular situation is that um, you might not believe something is over, you know, and that is the problem. I'm wondering if there is, some, if there are some people that are dealing with the loss of somebody, of a loved one, and that's what, because I, I have a card down here that's also about that, and maybe that's what the star card is like, you know, you are going through stages of grief and you, you feel like, you know, when is this going to end? And, um, you know, it's, if there's, yeah, you know, um, the, the other thing too is with the Ace of Wands, if you have met somebody and you have um, been dealing with grief, you may feel like you're getting over it and then you have that memory and it becomes much harder to just kind of move on. What's coming in is the Ace of Cups, and this is new love, and again, maybe a new business that has a healing or creative angle to it. And that may, um, or if you are somebody who could start a new project like that, that could be it too. <laughs> oh my gosh, I always have to deal with these things.
Um, and I did get this as the outcome, so I picked an additional card because this is the Five of Cups is a card of grief and mourning the loss of something. So that's why I was going back to the star card. If maybe there's somebody who you're you're trying to get that message from, you know, are they okay? Are they, you know, do they still are they still in contact with me? And uh, so it's a it's a process, but also. Um, as far as I'm concerned, it's it's very interesting. I'll, I'll tell you what I think about that card because in June, the first eclipse with um, Sagittarius is going to occur of this new cycle on June 5th. It'll be at 15 degrees of Sagittarius. And to me, that's almost connected to this card. I don't know why I get this vibe from that. and And I think it is because... I think we're, we are being called to let go of things in our life that we may have held on to. You know, people can hold on to hurts, grief, trauma as part of our identity even. And it would be very scary for some to just let go of that because it means that now you are totally free and you are, you know, required to go after your dreams. You don't have any excuses anymore. But if you keep that in your vibration, that sense of um, sadness, you can always rely on that and use that as an excuse. So I think of, you know, I could have left it here because I actually think that there's something really uplifting about that in a strange way. But I did choose an additional card, and I got the Seven of Pentacles, and that was, this was a card of, this is a card, which is connected to um, putting energy into something and seeing how it manifests. And you know what? This is the best way to kind of like um, jumpstart your you know, some endeavor. So let's say you have wanted to start, I don't know, like you, maybe you're attuned to Reiki and you have the attunement where you're able to offer your services, but you kind of have held back and then you decide to go for it. Maybe you can start doing it with people you know and you can do it very gradually, very slowly and see if it works. See if they really um, feel like you're helping them and then you kind of expand from there, you take it from there. Or if you are um, an artist and you put in that elbow grease, if you will, because, you know, being an artist, you have to, let's say you are a painter. There's somebody I know, I don't know them personally, but I know of them. I, I see their artistic creations. And I know this person has to have a really strong work ethic because they, um, they're very, they seem to be very prolific and have a lot to show for their efforts. So what does that mean? I mean, if you're not punching a clock and you have a studio or a room um, to go into and to do your work, you have to develop that kind of um, uh, routine where you can just say, okay, this is, I'm going to devote X amount of time to doing my creative output, or if I'm studying some kind of a spiritual practice that I'm going to end up using, I have to devote this time. So the, this new moon in Taurus is a great opportunity for you to kind of um, look at your daily routine, Sag, and see how you can make it more um, productive, more like more efficient is what I mean, but also that it is suitable for your current state of being, not for who you were before. And if you're somebody who is who has had their work life altered dramatically, and you are um, spending a lot of time at home, this is even more. Um, you know, aligned with that because you have this opportunity where you're able to, um, you know, do this. And that's really cool because not everybody has has that opportunity. Some people are have been working um, 
the whole time, you know? It's such a weird period of time because it's almost like there's two different, it's like an alternate universe. But, you know, being self-actualized means that you are always on the case. You're always looking for where you can find um, the ability to, you know, improve yourself, improve your life circumstances. So anyway, Sanj, I hope that you enjoyed this. And um, if you'd like a private reading, the link is below. I do mostly ast astrology readings. I'm mainly an astrologer. but um, And that's why I include so much astrology in these tarot readings. But um, I think the tarot is really great for videos. And it does tend to um, garner more views than my... Um, some of my astrology um, uh, videos have, so that's why I took it up in the first place because I wanted to be able to, you know, grow my channel and things like that. But the happy outcome has been the ability to um, use another tool in the toolbox, and it's it's all about. It's not about the individual cards. It's about the, you know, the food for thought that is generated with the cards. So I hope that I've given you some. Take care. Bye.